I just noticed that I'm dirty. Well, I'm beautiful at every filth. Hello everyone. I'm going to go on a whim and presuppose that most of you are going to agree with me that mechanical disc brakes don't have the best of reputation and let's be honest, that's not entirely undeserved. However, I also think that's not entirely justified. However, we can kind of agree that hydraulics are kind of better. However, what to do when you're not in a position to use a native solution, a lever, to caliper, which is really completely hydraulic, because for whatever reason you can't just go that route. For example, you want to control your bike using one of these, and let's be honest with each other, road drifters are expensive on their own, and hydraulic road drifters, considering they are the new and improved version of these, are extra expensive on top. So what to do when you don't want to shell exorbitant amount of money for a proper hydraulic solution? Right mechanicals, they work perfectly fine. However, there are also some hybrid solutions which you might want to try, or you might not, we'll see. And the hero of our video today is one such solution, which is a Zoom X-Tech hybrid hydraulic and mechanical road caliper which I purchased on AliExpress for 16 constitutional amendments per caliper, which means I spent 32 ish. Alright, here we are. But before I start, let me start by being redundant, apparently. If you are subscribed, keep listening, this is going to be a hilarious joke. I mean, seriously, this is going to be like a Grammy, two Oscars, and the Nobel Peace Prize, apparently. If you are not subscribed to the channel, this is a very budget version of a DRM. It works like this. You will now pause the video, because I told you it's going to be a very budget version. You are now pause the video and you can unpause it only if you are subscribed to the channel and you have hit the bell notification icon. Alright, so everyone subscribed now and we are now a big family. So uh, this is the hero of our video today. This is the rear caliper. No, this is the front caliper. This is the rear caliper. Or at least that's what they're sold because they differ only by the adapter. This is the 160 millimeter uh, international standard. This is the 140 to 160 millimeter adapter. You are going to get the brakes assembled like this, but I have removed the pads to show you that this is the pin, this is the pad spacer, and those are the pads. You can already note that the pads are standard Shimano something something from years ago. They are pretty common, so there's not going to be a problem getting those. All right, let's look at the caliper up close from the start. You can see that this is a monolithic design. There are no two halves here. Uh, the body of the caliper and the lever here shows the finish that the Chinese do when they want to do something on a budget. Essentially, you can see the blemishes here. Essentially, once the part is forged or cast, it is thrown into a bin and then shaken among some really tiny metal shards and that removes the burrs and statistically smooths the entire surface of the item. However, it leaves uh, usually these blemishes like here or here or here you can see this and on the back of the caliper it's not really smooth but it's well it's just cosmetics you can see that this is a budget part from the start anyhow once that process finishes it was CNC so all the channels inside were made and then it was anodized in this particular purple color and there you have it the cap here isn't a part of this process it was turned and then and then anodized in red because you can see that the surface finish is different than the rest of the caliper. Apart from these two holes on this cap, there are no sharp edges anywhere. Everything is smooth, everything is turning correctly. Essentially, you can see that this is a budget part, but it's kind of confidence inspiring. The caliper has two adjustments. You can do the pad contact here using this screw and you can do the free stroke here. The range of the adjustments is to be determined. Obviously I haven't mounted this to a bicycle yet. All right, let's take a look at the hydraulics of the system. This is the cap of the of the bore of the pistons. The pistons are here, there are two of them and they are aluminum. This is the master cylinder and there are channels which were machined inside in order to route the fluid through the pistons. You can see that there's a one channel here and I guess that this is the bleed port. 
point being with this particular design is that it is an entirely closed system, there is no reservoir inside. And if this was a fully fledged system with a lever and everything and it was closed, then being closed it would be an issue because the thermal expansion of the fluid could cause the entire brake to simply lock up. However, considering how little fluid there is inside of here, I don't think this is going to be an issue. I think this is a bleed port, so now I'm going to try to match a Shimano funnel here. All right, this is the funnel. Let's see if it fits. It actually does. It seems that you can bleed these using the Shimano funnel. This is pretty good. So I'm also guessing that since they are copying Shimano everything, what you do to bleed them is to fill them with mineral oil. Alright, let's try to answer the question you are now all asking. What's the benefit of this one over this one apart from price? Because this one is much cheaper, although you can get mechanicals even cheaper than this anyway. Now this is a Hayes CX-5. This is a very typical road brake or mechanical road brake. It works like this. A cable is pulling this lever here, right? There's a mechanism inside that pushes the pad against the rotor. This bends a rotor a bit and it's pushing the rotor and the other pad against the non-moving pad on this side. Obviously, because you are bending the rotor, you are adding a little bit of springy feeling to your lever. Because the problem is that mechanical disc brakes usually, and by usually I mean always, have a housing that goes to the lever. And there are two problems with housings when it comes to mechanical disc brakes. First of all, in comparison to hydraulics, there's, there's much more internal friction inside because there's a cable that is moving uh, in a Teflon tube inside. So obviously it's going to friction against it and there's no such issue on a hydraulic system. And, unless you are using very expensive, uh, uncompressible housings, uh, your typical uh, brake housing is a, essentially a long coil that you are compressing as you are pushing or pulling the lever of the brake, which adds that springy feeling to, to your levers, which uh, is kind of jarring, at least annoying for most people, and makes the modulation of the brake a little bit more difficult. Now, obviously, in comparison of those two, there's going to be a housing and it's going to be almost identical so you're not going to be avoiding that one so they are most likely going to operate in a similar fashion however the main advantage of this oh sorry of this over this is that this is a fully hydraulic actuation of the pistons so they are going to clasp the rotor from both sides and unless you have a trp spires which are mechanicals which do the same thing this is going to be not adding uh, the spending of the rotor and extra springiness to the lever. Moreover, and this is going to be very specific to this particular kind of brake, so this or Juintech or whatever is the doppelganger of this one, essentially, oh, we'll get to that. The internal mechanism, there's a helix there and there's a ball and uh, when this lever rotates, uh, this helix is pushing uh, this ball against uh, uh, the piston agent pushes the pad against the rotor and it also adds friction and it's not going to exist here because it's entirely hydraulic. Now if this was a TRP higher D brake there would also be a, a reservoir which would add another feature which is not present here because this is closed system. And what it is? Well, it's automatic pad wear adjustment, something that uh, exists only on hi purely hydraulic uh, semi-open systems. In essence, the benefits you get from this one over this one is that you get dual-sided activation of the pads, you get just one-sided here, but there are mechanicals which do the dual-sided operation anyway. However, because the internal mechanism here, the activation is purely hydraulic, you're not going to get the internal friction of the caliper at the lever in this system. So it's going to be acting a little lighter. Still springy because of the housing, but it's going to be a little, a little lighter. So this is everything I have to say about these at this current moment. Considering their price and their design, I am cautiously optimistic they are going to work admirably and reliably. Obviously, this is not a really complicated device that there shouldn't be any problem with it. 
Anyhow, uh, I hope to see you in the next video, I hope you enjoyed the content, and if you're watching this in the year 2058, well, what can I say? We tried! Don't blame us!